What if love, arguably the most profound of human experiences, were merely a tool of evolution, a mechanism designed to ensure our survival and reproduction? It's a provocative thought, isn't it? Now, let's delve into this fascinating perspective on love. When we look at solitary creatures like the giant panda or the porcupine, it seems that love as we know it is pretty much absent. These creatures live alone, survive alone, and interact with others of their kind only briefly to mate before going their separate ways. Love, as humans experience it, seems superfluous in their lives. Humans, however, are a different story. We are, as social psychologist Elliot Aronson puts it, the social animal. We live in groups, we depend on each other, and some of these dependencies are so critical that we invest our emotions, our resources, even our lives into them. This is where the concept of natural selection comes into play. Natural selection, the driving force of evolution, favors adaptations. These are solutions, whether anatomical, physiological, or psychological, to recurrent problems of survival and reproduction. For an adaptation to evolve, there needs to be a consistent environmental structure that recurs over time. These can be of various types, a connection between abrasive surfaces and skin damage, a correlation between prolonged eye contact and sexual interest, a link between symmetrical features and absence of environmental insults. When these regularities recur generation after generation, and when they provide information that contributes to reproductive success, natural selection can exploit these regularities to create adaptations. For instance, a callus-producing adaptation can solve the problem of skin damage due to repeated exposure to abrasive surfaces. Similarly, adaptations such as jealousy can alert an individual about an increased risk of a partner's infidelity. Standards of beauty can form around cues recurrently associated with physical health. All these adaptations are solutions to recurrent problems of survival or reproduction. But could the complex psychological state we call love, which includes emotional states, information processing devices, and acts of love, be an adaptation that evolved to solve problems of reproduction? In conclusion, love from an evolutionary perspective is an adaptation, or more accurately a complex suite of adaptations, designed to solve specific problems of survival and reproduction. It is a finely tuned set of psychological devices that serve critical utilitarian functions in highly specific contexts. It's interesting how something as profoundly human as love can be understood in such a pragmatic utilitarian light. This understanding brings us a step closer to the truth of the old saying, love is a many splendid thing.